and so this is the webinar. It's on the Wednesday, which is the wellness day at the BBB. And it's called the Remote Remedy Work From Home Without Pulling Your Hair Out. So we've all been thrown into this environment of working from home, right? Whether we want to or not, we're here. And it's the reality of the times right now. So today we're gonna to give you a lot of great tools and tips so that you can be effective working from home, working remotely. And I bet you all have experienced some funny moments uh, with working remotely so far. So different things that happen uh, throughout uh, the experience of being on Zoom calls or go to meetings or uh, even conference calls, right? We have things in our background that we're not used to having in a work environment, such as children or pets uh, or significant others, whatever that might be. Even the other day, we got visited by a woodpecker outside of the uh, conference call, we could hear a woodpecker. So just tell us if you can, we would love to hear some funny moments that you have experienced with working remotely so far. And if you go and hover down at the bottom of the screen, you will see the chat button. You can click that chat button and put in there any funny moments that you've experienced while working remotely thus far. So any, any fun things that have happened to you and, uh, or, or maybe it didn't even happen to you. Maybe it happened to someone else and you were on the, the phone call or the Zoom call uh, or whatever web platform you're using and you experienced it or saw it. And there's also a lot of funny things going around the internet right now, videos, YouTube videos of Zoom meetings where people forget to turn their camera off and wish they would have turned their camera off uh, or forgetting to mute and people are heard in the background or pets are heard in the background. So. What are some of your funniest moments while working remotely so far? And you can really type that into uh, the Zoom chat at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you will hover there and click on the chat and type it in. So please share your funniest moment while working remotely so far. We'd love to hear some. On the last call we did, uh, someone said that they had two donkeys who live next door to them and they are hearing the, the, uh, the donkey noises that come when uh, donkeys get together. So they were hearing that and in the background of a Zoom call. And uh, I see that someone has shared, my neighbor was honking nonstop to get her kids in the car while well, I was in a meeting and talking, my coworkers thought it was me honking at people because it was so loud. Oh, that's hysterical, right? So uh, your, your coworkers are like, wow, you know, she's really upset about that. <laughs> then you had to explain, right? It wasn't me, it was my neighbor who was honking nonstop to get the kids in the car. So, uh, you know, just funny things, noises, uh, pets, or kids that we're not used to having. You know, basically we now are all homeschool teachers. So I have a 14 year old son and anyone who has children right now is also a, a homeschool teacher. So sometimes they need something. And even though we say a boundary and say, hey, let mom uh, finish this call, uh, sometimes they don't listen to that. Right, so like Summer is sharing one of her funniest moments with working remotely so far is, my son keeps running behind all my video calls, but is only half dressed. I love it, lots of lap. <laughs> right, I mean, they're photo bombing our video calls, our family members. I've seen this over and over again. We just did a, a long video call uh, with, with some clients and we had the same thing happen with her son running behind her uh, with a dog, with their dog, and, uh, you know, it just, but people are very understanding right now, and that's what I think is great, that 
that a lot of times uh, people are very understanding knowing, hey, we are all adjusting to working from home. So it's not gonna be a perfect environment. And Randy has shared that he saw a town hall meeting recording and a mayor forgot he had a lapel microphone on and he shared bathroom sounds. How many of us have done that? right, over the years uh, to, to forget to turn your lapel microphone off um, or and, and you go to the restroom. I mean, hysterical, right? That's not really hysterical. It's really embarrassing if it happens to you, but it's funny to watch on, uh, on YouTube. So I just think right now we are all adjusting to working remotely from home and we really need to be forgiving with one another and compassionate with one another. And we have to keep our sense of humor. So any other funniest moments with working remotely so far, it's really uh, been an adjustment period for all of us, right? To have our pets and have our kids and our family members uh, or just even our neighbors, right? Like the, the neighbor who was honking nonstop or the donkeys who were hee-hawing next door, right? When you're on these calls, it's pretty funny to see. And uh, recently, I, I had uh, a situation happen where I had to, I was having a very important business call. And five minutes before I logged in and my computer crashed, so I called my tech genius, who you're about to meet today, Randy Ganacious, and I said, help me, I, my computer crashed, what do I do? And he said, go kick your husband out of his office. So I listened and went and kicked my husband out of his office and said, I've got to have your computer for this call, but I'm not used to being in his office. And I left the door open. So in comes our cat and jumps in front of the video so everyone sees the cat and he's kind of loud, he meows. And then not only did he meow and go in front of the camera, but he jumped on the curtain next to the desk and the whole curtain rod came crashing down. So right when we were starting a meeting, that was how we started. And it was hysterical. I mean, thank God everyone laughed. But uh, those are the types of things people are, are dealing with right now. Like, how do we work from home? And that's what we're going to share today. Tips and tools for working from home. And here's Marsha sharing. I was on a call and someone had a coat rack behind them. And someone asked if they were drying their underwear on the coat rack. Nice. Okay. The coat, the coat rack had face marks on it and they did not and they did look like underwear. Oh my gosh, hysterical, right? So you just don't know. And things are happening these days, right? With funny moments of working remotely so far. So <laughs> face marks. <laughs> so that's, those are things, right? These are things that are happening. And we, we have to be compassionate, forgiving, you know, laugh, have a sense of humor, around these things that happen on a daily basis where it might not even be happening to you, but it's happening on the call. So any other funny moments out there with working remotely so far, we'd love to hear them if you have any. Cool, oh, Marsha is saying that the coat rack had face masks on it, got it, all right, but it looked like underwear. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so funny. So share your funniest moment with working remotely so far. And we'd love to hear it. So Randy, maybe you can share yours. I love that story of your son who comes in. Yeah, I really wish I would have had it recorded because that probably would have gotten maybe millions of hits on YouTube. But yeah, my, so my, my three-year-old at the time, he came into the office and he just started yelling frog. Just, so passionately he was yelling frog but the people on the call didn't hear the word frog instead they heard a different f word he couldn't quite enunciate the word frog so they heard this cute little voice just dropping f-bombs left and right <laughs> in my office but um the good thing was that i i remained unmuted so that i can explain very clearly on camera that that was a nice picture of a frog I even showed a picture of the book and my son next to me. 
so I don't look like a guy that was sharing, you know, F words with my, with my three-year-old. So, right. <laughs> yep. So another good reason to record your meetings because they could be used for uh, examples later. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that was so funny. All right. Well, any others? And uh, yeah, this was Shannon saying I had the donkeys and they started braying loudly during a conference call. So we're seeing, you know, lots of photo bombs, uh, noises from neighbors, things in the background, even family members in the background or pets in the background. So these are the types of things that we're dealing with today and working remotely so far. And we're here to help you to adjust to this and to really help in terms of working from home without pulling your hair out because there's a lot of uh, times that we might feel frustrated with the environment that we find ourselves in. And by the way, one of the things we're doing right now, I'm gonna do a play within a play, is something you can do on your calls. If you have a call that starts at a certain time, instead of just waiting for everyone to get in and it's kind of an awkward silence, you can, you can have people do an activity like this as people are logging in. So we're trying to get some participation going and having you all share your funniest moments with working remotely so far. And then we, we don't start in that awkward silence. So that's one of the tips we'll share today for getting engagement. So with that, I do think that we are at the start time, Randy. And... <laughs> Oh, is someone not muted, Randy? <laughs> okay, that was actually intentional, everyone. So how many times have we heard a dog barking or a cat meowing in the background when we're working from home and working remotely? And maybe it's not our pets. Maybe it's our children who are coming in and saying, hey, I need something, mom or dad. Uh, I need something, right? We're all homeschool teachers right now. This is a reality check. This is our reality today. And sometimes it makes us feel like we want to pull our hair out. So that's what this webinar is about today. It is called the Remote Remedy Work From Home Without Pulling Your Hair Out. And we're going to give you a lot of tips today that will help you to adjust to these times. And before I do, I'm going to turn it over to Faustine who, with the Better Business Bureau, and she's going to introduce us. Yes, thank you, everyone. Um, for those who've not, who don't know me, uh, my name is Faustine Chan. I'm the Business Innovation Manager for BBB. Um, so we've been holding these daily webinars just to help our businesses with, you know, useful tools and topics to help them navigate during this time. So um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so if you do miss any part of it, um, we will post it online at events.bbcommunity.org. And then I know a couple of people um, are joining by phone. Um, so if you're joined by phone, um, don't worry, they will be posted. You can retrieve those slides as well. Um, so we have actually three speakers today. Um, We'll start out with Dr. Sharon Lam Hartman. Um, she is the CEO of Insight Out Learning, um, an award winning leadership team and organizational development consulting company with over 25 years of experience, a doctorate from Columbia University and a master's from Cornell. Dr. Sharon leads the company to transform companies, teams and leaders to achieve exceptional results. We also have um, Randy Ganesius. Um, he is a technology expert and presenter. He has over 20 years of service in technology and video production with thousands of hours of content. I know that's a lot of work with video. We have a video producer on our staff too, so kudos to you. Um, he's also served in many productions with notable figures and also has an extensive background in product development and produces training videos for software and CAD design. Um, we also have Samantha I believe it's Ferzyk. Very good, thank you. Okay, got it. Uh, she's a program manager and moderator for the company. She has over 20 years of excellent customer service, handling both internal and external communications for the company. Um, she lives in New York with her husband and also three daughters. Great, thank you so much, Faustine. We so appreciate the Better Business Bureau sponsoring this today, and we appreciate you kicking it off. 
So with that, we will get started. And Sam is here. Any questions you have, please ask them in the chat. She will be moderating for us today. If we can't get to all of them, we'll address them at the end or we can also email answers through Faustine. So you can just ask any questions you have whenever you have them in the chat. We also have little breaks throughout today that we're gonna stop and have time for questions. You are gonna all be muted just to avoid any oops, I thought I was muted moments. And if you have any technical issues, like Faustine said, this webinar and the handouts will be available later today for you in terms of the recording. So I wanna just share a little bit about what, uh, or, or actually find out who's on the phone today. So if we can go to the next chart, uh, we wanna find out how comfortable are you working in the virtual office? So this is a technique you can use for engagement when you work remotely, it's called polling. And most of the web platforms have this. Zoom, WebEx, the key platforms, they all have this. So what you're gonna see is, on the left is a one, okay? That's like your grandma, you think the computer has a virus and I better wash my hands, okay? So you're not comfortable at all in working in the virtual environment. On the right, you feel it's a five, I should be teaching this class. So what we'd like you to do is you actually see a poll now up in front on your screen with the numbers one through five. I'd like you to click on the circle next to the number that you most identify with, that you think really describes your comfort level of working in the virtual office. So go ahead and click that, and then you click the submit button at the bottom, and then what happens is it's tallying in the background, and then Sam's gonna put up the answers and the percentages so we can see who's in our audience today. This is a technique you can use to learn about who's in your audience so you can tailor your message to your audience. So today, we have some people who are comfortable working in the virtual office, right? No one's at a one or a two. And we have 30% at a three who feel kind of average at it. We have 43% at a four, which feels above average. And then we have 26% who could be teaching this class. So I will guarantee that you will each get something from this program today, regardless of how comfortable you are because of the way that we've structured this. So if we can go to the next chart, the purpose of today is really to provide the remedy and the tips for successfully working from home. And this is so we can prevent you from pulling your hair out or disliking any human or pet that you're living with. We want you to make this transition that we find ourselves in with ease, with efficiency, and with productivity. So I'm hoping that at the end of this, you're gonna feel more confident and comfortable working remotely, and that you're gonna learn at least three new tips that will help you make this change successfully. So that's our objective today. So if we can go to the next chart, this is our agenda. We're gonna talk about three different topic areas today. How to best set up your home office, how to minimize distractions, and how to feel confident and competent working with video conferencing technology. So some of those video technology tips are gonna be introductory. Some are advanced as well about how to feel confident and competent. So it's really gonna to speak to all the different levels in our audience today. So what we'd like to do is to do one more poll and to find out where would you like to start? What's the hottest topic out there that you would like to hear about today? So is it, how to best set up your home office? Is it how to minimize distractions? Or is it how to feel confident and competent working with video conferencing technology? So go ahead and click next to the circle, right, or in the circle next to the topic that you would like us to start with today. Like what's the most important topic that you want us to start with today? Click on it and then hit the submit button. And we'll do another poll. And so this again is gonna tell us where we're gonna start because we could start in any of these, but we wanna start with the most important topic to you as our audience member. And this is another example of how you can use a poll to find out who's in your audience. So what results do we have, Sam? Great, so we have, uh, I'm glad that we have three topics that you all wanna hear about. So 46% would like to start with the technology, Randy. 
And then 31% would like to do how to minimize distractions with 23% how to best set up your office. So let's start with technology, go to distractions, and then go to how to best set up the office. And I'll turn it over to our tech genius here, Randy. And I'll also be popping in periodically as well as closing out. So Randy, it's all yours. Thanks, Sharon. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that our experience in this webinar is optimized. So first of all, just like you would with a guest visiting your home, you want them to know where everything's at. So we'll just walk around this since we're all around, right around the four and five range um, as far as com being comfortable with the technology. So of course, we have all of the mute buttons and the video, the stop video buttons. That's where you can access the chat. In case you don't see it, that's how you can access it. And then we have the participant panel. I noticed there are some people that um, um, maybe you have a different name than what appears in the participant panel. That's where you can rename that. And then to change the look and feel, those are the layout buttons that allow you to change from a full screen view to a windowed view, and maybe a gallery view so you can see all of the participants. So that's where you can access that. And then we have the meeting information just in case you need to share the information right away. That's where you can find that. And then of course, if you don't see the participant panel and the chat panel, though there is a more button. And if you click that, that allows you to expand and find more options for this experience. Now, some of you are four, some of you are fives, and that's great that, you, that you're tech savvy, but I know your time is very valuable to you. And just to give you an idea, I'm the neighborhood nerd. So people come to me for help and advice, getting their new home offices set up. So something I, that saves me time is sharing this download, this easy way for them to understand, okay, these are the things I need to do to set up my home office. So this is a time saver for you. But let's go ahead and get started with the basics. Now, this is what some of our participants show up like but you guys are four or five, but just in case you are the presenter, in case you are delivering a webinar, there is going to be that audience member out there that might need a little bit more help. So we're gonna talk about the things to get the basics set up for your video conference and to get your audience set up with the basics. So these are the agenda items that we'll look at first. Now, we've heard Zoom is in the news, everyone's heard about all of the issues, but then again, some of those issues were caused by just uh, ignoring the, the basics, like don't share your links on social media. Some Zoom links actually have the password in them. So if you've shared that, then that's how people can easily get into the, your Zoom meeting. There's also the password option, which some people just don't even use. So by default now, Zoom has that enabled. So all of these are in the download. Some of them, they're pretty straightforward, but these are just things that you need to do just the diligence that you have to go through to make sure that you're not disrupted in your webinar. Now, we're going to focus mainly on Zoom, but many of these tips and all of this can apply to all of the different platforms out there. So let's get started. Now, as an attendee, you can change your name. When you join a meeting room, physical or virtual, first thing you wanna know is who's in the room. So that's where the participant panel comes into play. Now you can manage your mute button, you can rename yourself, but this is where you want to be seen. So just like when you walk into a meeting room, you can see everyone else, but you should also change your name to, um, just in case you have, let's say a default login set up on your computer. So that's where you can rename that. Another option is to mute yourself and to chat with others. Now, the reason why this is so important is because when you're chatting in, WebEx or Zoom, there's a little drop down menu that shows the name that you're, whoever you're sending the message to. Now, sometimes people forget that they started a private message and they start sending a, a, a private message to the entire group. So just keep that in mind. Remind, just double check the two field when you, um, when you send a message. Now in both Zoom and WebEx, it has the raise hand feature. So that's another way that you can show participation in any meeting. Now again, the chat feature, you've got that drop down at the very bottom of the screen there in the chat, in the chat box. But another option is just to go straight to the participant panel. This is, this is probably a feature you wanna use instead of using 
the, the chat box down below. So instead, you can chat directly with someone through the participant panel. That way, you don't have to worry about sending it to everyone, and you know who exactly you're sending it to. Now, when it comes to sharing content, this is where many people get stumped when they first start sharing content. They share their screen, and then suddenly the this bar just disappears, the, um, uh, the presenter's bar or the share bar. That shows up at the very top of your screen. Now, most of you already know that, but just in case, that's where it is. It's at, this, at the very top of the screen there. Now, just very quickly, one useful thing is that in Zoom, you have the ability to share everything on your screen, but there in the advanced tab here, you can share a certain area of your desktop. Now, this other option here, the second camera option, it's great if you're, let's say you're um, a doctor or um, an artist and you want to show a second camera, say on your desktop, or you have a something that you need to demonstrate on your desk. So having that second camera option is a great feature. So one that many people are starting to use more often and it's very effective. Now, if you have secure documents, maybe they're on, on the cloud. So maybe on Dropbox or Google Drive. This is another useful feature that you wanna take a look at because that way when you're sharing the content, let's say it's a video on Dropbox, instead of using twice the amount of bandwidth of playing it from your desktop and then playing it to the cloud, instead you can send that video directly to the participants by playing it directly from these other platforms. Now, another thing that people typically overlook when they share any content is whenever there's audio. Whenever, whenever there's audio, you wanna make sure that the share computer sound is checked. And that way, if you're playing the video, it plays through, it doesn't play through the speakers, it, instead it plays through the platform. So it plays through Zoom. So let me zoom in right there, just so you can see. The other thing is the optimize screen sharing for video clip option here. Now, there's a, there's a catch there. If you want to show video, use this option because that way it smooths out the video on screen. But the catch is if you're sharing data, if you're showing text, uncheck it because that way the text will be a lot clearer. So that's one thing that you want to look at. So consider what media you're going to be sharing on screen. Okay. Oh, and by the way, make sure you mute everyone before you play a video because there are some people that play that don't have a headset. And what happens is the microphone picks up what's coming out of the speaker and it just loops back into the audience. So be mindful of that. Now, the more intermediate to advanced features, uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about polling. Now, Sharon is an expert when it comes to behavioral Man or organizational behavior. Uh, but this is an effective use of the polling feature. In fact, let me start that right now. But uh, Sharon, do you mind talking to this chart while we set up the poll? Absolutely. So this is a change curve. So we are all in a time of great change. So a few weeks ago or a month ago, we were able to go out, have drinks with friends, dinner, go out and meet face-to-face, -face, do face-to-face -face presentations, all different things, right? We were living our lives in a very different way than today. So we've been thrown into, hey, we have to work remotely and we have to keep our families and our friends safe uh, from this virus. So we are in the midst of a change. And one of the things that our company does is to help people through change and to manage change, both through our coaching and our training programs. And so this is a typical change curve of stages that people go through when they're experiencing change. And I'd like you to think about each of those stages. And Randy's putting up a poll. And with respect to the coronavirus, right, and having to uh, work remotely from home, where are you on the change curve? Do you feel shock, frustration, denial, despondency, tentative acceptance, exploration? Are you in resolution? So go ahead and say where you feel you most identify with in terms of the stage of change. And then you can click it and then click submit at the bottom. This is gonna help us see where is everyone at in the change curve. And this is something that we have to realize that we have to remember to be empathy and also compassion 
during these times? Because let's say you're in exploration or resolution and someone else is in frustration or anger. Sometimes as leaders, you might think, oh, they should be where I'm at. I'm in exploration or resolution, right? But they're not. And so it's to be able to hold the space for wherever anyone is and to have empathy for that. And, and having a place where they can discuss where they're at actually helps people move through the curve more towards the resolution. So what we're seeing today is there's a few people in that, right? Frustration, anger, denial, despondency. And we appreciate honesty as well. And some days I get right flipped into that as well. It's like I woke up the other day, I was really in some frustration and anger because of something that had happened. So we can go in and out of these stages throughout the change process as well. And then we've got 39% tentative acceptance, we have 32% exploration, and we have 18% resolution. So this is an example of how you could use polling in a meeting. We also used polling in the beginning of this webinar where you saw us ask you for your opinion on how comfortable you are in the virtual environment and also what you wanted to start with in terms of a topic. So it's a great tool that not everyone knows exists that you can use to make your meetings engaging and interactive. Thanks, Sharon. So to set that up, you have to have a Zoom enabled account or a, um, sorry, a licensed Zoom account. And to do that, you just go into Zoom. There's a polling option down at the very bottom. And once you click launch poll, that's where you can click on the edit button once that launches. Now, you saw exactly what shows up on the participant screen. As the host, you can, you can see the results real time. So once you see a fair amount of responses um, submitted, that's when you can end the poll and then share the results. You have the option of using it later as well. Now, if you're a teacher, for example, you can collect the responses and run a report that shows who responded with which answer. So it can be very useful for pop quizzes or just identifying where your audience is. Now the whiteboard and annotation tool, typically I, what I usually see in, in poorly set up webinars are Etch-a-Sketch drawings. So let's talk about that really quick. So we might, we might have some Etch-a-Sketch drawings here in a minute here, but let's try it out. So this is another example of how we can use the features in Zoom to create engagement and interactivity. And in fact, um, Sharon, do you mind talking about this as well while I set up the annotation tool? Absolutely. Thanks, Randy. So basically, just like if we were in a physical space with each other and we had an easel pad in front of the room, you can use this like an easel pad. So anything you can do face to face, you can do virtually. And so this is something here that uh, you want to draw. We would like you to draw your favorite quarantine activity thus far. All right. So in a moment, Randy's going to talk you through how you do that using the annotation feature, and then we'd like you to go ahead and draw it. So if you go to the top of your screen under view options and you hit the annotate choice and then you hit draw, that's how you would, and you click, I click on the squiggle. Um, and then you just start drawing wherever you find a space, you know, just start drawing. It's okay if you overlap. Are you, are you seeing a, are you seeing a theme here? Sharon? I'm seeing a theme here. I'm seeing a theme, Randy. Yeah. So this like helps us to, to see. So it looks like, uh, there's some martinis happening. Uh, definitely. I hear, I hear they're called quarantinis and, uh, glasses of wine. We see some reading or writing happening. <laughs> I can't tell if that's a, a stream, <laughs> water, or a slip and slide <laughs> going across the screen. <laughs> exactly. That could be uh, getting out in nature, right? Yeah, they said yes. Yeah, that's great. Um, All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it because <laughs> it can... Uh, so this is, this is one of the drawbacks when it comes to using the annotation tool because if you have too many people then it can become overwhelming and it becomes a mess. So what I did right away was I stopped the annotation and that's how I uh, disabled that. Now if you have 
disruptive uh, kids, for example, that joined your 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 classroom, for example, uh, there's a there's a option here to quickly disable the annotations. Uh, so just keep note of that if you use this tool. I'm actually going to save this really quick because this is a inter interesting picture here. So let me save that. And, yes, uh, it's awesome to have this. Okay. And then you can clear it and then you start over or you can save it if you want to save it and uh, look at it later. Yeah, this was, a la this was the last webinar's drawing here. So very, very similar results. But this is a more useful type of chart here. Um, in fact, one of our facilitators uh, came up with this, but Sharon, do you want to talk about this slide here? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Marsha Petrie Sue is one of our consultants and she came up with this fabulous content. So this is a personality tool. So if you think about four different types of people, there's people, people, party, people, planner, people, and point people. And if you read the description under each, you can start to see maybe which one do you identify most with. And this is something we use in our presentation skills classes in order to know your audience, to know the decision maker that you are presenting to. Because if you are a people person and they are a party person or a point person, okay, and you start presenting or talking like a people person and they want you to get to the point, you could end up losing them. So this is a really useful tool in knowing your audience and tailoring your message to your audience and also knowing more about who you are uh, as an individual. So Randy's gonna go to the next chart and you're gonna go up to view options and click annotate, but this time instead of clicking draw, you're gonna click stamp. And you can either choose a check mark or a heart or a star. It doesn't matter which one for this exercise. But when you go to the next chart, Randy, uh, you're going to see the four quadrants for the people, people, party, people, point, people, and planner people. So now I want you to try out that annotation stamp. So again, view options, annotate, click on the stamp, and go to the one that you feel uh, most, you know, identifies with, right? That you feel describes you the most, your key preference. So I'm seeing lots of party people right now, a couple point people. One of the point people is checking off every item on the list, which point people love to do. And some people people and some planner people. So this is a great way of seeing, hey, who's in the audience? You know, there's quite a few. There's a good distribution here. So now what we could do in a virtual meeting is we could have a conversation about this. We could ask some questions in chat. We could also put you in small groups and maybe we put all the point people together, all the party people, all the people people and all the planner people and we give you a question. This is not only to be used in teaching and facilitation. This can also be very helpful in general meetings because I just sat in a general meeting from 7 a.m. to 3.30. I was observing the meeting to give a coaching client feedback and all they did the entire time from 7 a.m. till 3.30 was show charts and do large group participation. Now, I guarantee that there were people multitasking, right? Because you can't hold the attention with just showing charts and large group participation. So this is a tool that you can use to get more interaction and engagement and to make sure your audience is with you and not multitasking. Yeah, so the other thing is, Remember when we saw so many drawings on the screen there? That's because we had too many people with the, uh, with the toys in their hands scribbling on screen. So one thing that you could do is breakout rooms. And what's nice is you can have individuals, uh, you can have smaller groups where people can actually focus and have, uh, they can have dialogue instead of everyone talking over each other. So instead of 50 people, you can have uh, five rooms of, with five people each having, discussions instead of uh, imagine a, a round robin with 50 people that would take forever. So small groups is the way to go. And what's nice is you can use it to discuss those individual topics, gather feedback. And the other thing is that it just creates more dialogue. So to set that up with Zoom, it's a, it's a feature down at the very bottom there. You just have to enable it in your settings. And once you enable it, that's how you can access it. From there, once you have people logged in, 
you can click on the assign buttons here and then just select who you want to be in each room. Now what's nice about this feature is that if you have, let's say, 100 people, it could take you forever to assign them individually to each room. So instead, you can have Zoom automatically assign them. You can do this in WebEx as well. Now, the other thing is the use of the timing and how people get managed in these rooms. You can have them automatically come back to the main room or give them the freedom to move about. So imagine a large conference, for example, a physical conference, and you have people in the main session, but maybe there are certain agenda items that can be held in another breakout room. So what's nice is they can go to those other, se those other sessions, which might be more applicable to them, and then join back into the main room at their leisure. So that's a nice feature available, again, both in WebEx and Zoom. Now at the end, once everyone's had their discussions and they've gathered all of the ideas, you can easily bring them back. But before you do that, you can send them a message to, hey, to, warn them, to warn them, hey, it's time to come back in about five minutes. Once you close all the rooms, they all join back up and they can share and debrief whatever it is they discussed. So those are some of the more intermediate to advanced features and we can get, we can go so much further into detail when it comes to those items, but we do further training in those areas. The polling, for example, we can help with very effective polling that draws insights from your audience. When it comes to the annotations, we also have many examples that we can show you and help you out with when it comes to using effective annotations. Not the Etch-a-Sketch boards, but effective and insightful. Let's see. So any questions before we move backwards towards the distractions? Yeah, any questions? Um, mm -hmm. We have someone who asked, how do you recommend someone set up their camera when they have two monitors? Yeah, so right now I'm looking at the Zoom session right below my camera. So what I recommend is if you have two monitors, make sure you have wherever you're going to be focusing the most, move that content underneath your camera. Because if I had my web camera, where my presentation is actually at right now, I would be engaging with you like this. And if you're not making that eye contact with your audience, that gives them permission to disengage from your, from whatever it is you're saying. So try to maintain all of your notes or your, your uh, video conference, your video conferencing session right below your camera. Um, now, Let's see, so I, I got a couple of messages to show the, um, the screen sharing and the, the breakout sessions. So what I'll do is I'll create little video clips on how to access, actually how to enable and how to access them because there are two steps involved there. So I'll, I'll create little video clips that address that. And okay. we'll, get, we'll get those out to you. Uh, and something to be aware of is that for Zoom, you have to have the large group meeting platform, uh, which is more costly to do the breakouts. Uh, I think we're paying 90 a month to have that platform, but that allows you to put it, it put people into small groups. And there's others that, you know, um, for less that you can get to do the polling and the annotation. So you just have to kind of find out what are the options out there in terms of, and what your needs are. Yep. All right. So, not sure if any of you have been distracted while we were on this call, but um, I had my cat um, scratching at my door just, just a moment ago. Of course, my cat probably can't read this sign that says to respect the boundaries, but still. Now, we've seen this video. It's, um, it's a professor being interviewed on the BBC network and his kids come waltzing in. In fact, uh, you see his daughter just kind of strutting her way into the room there. And then his wife comes in to, to peel them both away from the video conference. But we're seeing this over and over, and that's the great thing about hit and record is you might have something to share with your friends and family later because it's, it's we're all human. And this goes to show the humanity in all of us. So uh, I mentioned my son and mentioned how I actually shared the um, translation of his 
<laughs> frog word on screen. And that actually created another dialogue, a human dialogue with uh, many of the people on the call. So it, as much as we want to try to avoid them, uh, we're all very, very um, forgiving when it comes to these situations. But still, we're going to talk about the boundaries and preventing things from happening, as well as some apps that you can run on your phone and on your computer and some tips to uh, mitigate those issues. Now, I showed the sign a moment ago, but it, this is a very simple fix for my family so they know when I'm on the air. Um, the other thing is when it comes to the internet, your internet connection, when everyone else is on the network, that's one thing that you might want to address as well. So not only setting the expectations for your family and anyone that might be visiting, but also letting them know, hey, consider the internet connection speed. Just don't stream Netflix or uh, maybe if they have to use a Zoom session, try to schedule it so you're not overlapping. Now, when it comes to the desktop distractions, by default, Zoom, actually not by default, there's a setting within Zoom that you can enable to disable any notifications on screen when you're sharing it. But other than that, on a Mac, you can just turn that option off. There's a slider menu at the very top right to, enable, to disable notifications. On a PC, it's in the bottom right. Just right click on that little, looks like a speech bubble, and that allows you to turn off notifications. Now, there are many other tips and apps out there. there. This is all in the download that's going to be available uh, to you at the end of the day. So use these links to dive into more of these tips because there are just so many that you can apply. Now, when it comes to visitors, I have one of those smart cameras that uh, sends me a notification on my phone. It shows a video of who's at the door. So a simple thing to enable you to know whether or not you have to get up and maybe sign for a package or just to ignore it. Maybe it's a solicitor. So very, very simple thing that you can do. It also adds some security as well. So even more links. Uh, this is, these are a couple of my favorite links here that showcase a lot of other tips out there. Now, when it comes to you being the distraction, this is where you should be more aware because sometimes I, I wasn't I didn't have the instinct to hit mute right away when my son came barging in. But then again, it's because I wasn't familiar with the platform at the time. So just be very familiar where that mute button appears because when you're sharing your screen, it actually shows up at the top. When you're not sharing your screen, it's on the very bottom. I know that with Zoom, while you're muted, if you hold down the space bar, it unmutes you. So th that's another shortcut. There's a lot of other shortcuts out there. Alt-A also unmutes and mutes your uh, audio as well. And this is probably something that we just need a little more awareness and that's what's happening on camera. Now behind me, there's a nightmare behind the screen here because like I mentioned, I'm the neighborhood nerd. So whenever I have to peel off any cables or power cables or any accessories to help fix an issue with, with my neighbors, it's it's happening behind the screen. I'll talk about backgrounds in a moment, but let's just be very aware of what is what your audience sees on camera. And this is probably the biggest pet peeve of mine. It's the echo. When people are not using headphones and they have their speakers turned up, what happens is Zoom tries its very best to eliminate the feedback, but sometimes if it just overpowers the microphone, it picks up all the extra noise. So get a headset, especially a noise canceling headset, because Sharon mentioned the woodpecker. That was actually that was actually happening outside my window a couple of days ago, but um, it it didn't it didn't interrupt the uh, the um, the meeting too much. So I guess along those lines, that's my second pet peeve right there: the tapping, the tapping next to the microphone. So just be aware of your what your audience sees and hears. This is probably something that more of you are seeing, especially being shoved into the work from home environment where you're not used to being on camera. So you have to be more aware of what is appropriate. One thing that really dis disrupts the camera is patterns. Whenever you see many, whenever the camera sees many patterns, it has to process all of those little details. So the other thing is try not to be a distraction. So just be appropriate, just make sure that, that you're appropriate for the camera. 
But Sharon, do you have any thoughts on that? Because I I know that um, uh, I can't talk to women's wear. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, that. I do think that the pattern is a great, great observation, you know, because when I wear something pattern and I'm on camera, it can get dizzy, right? When you look at it, you, your audience might be getting a little dizzy or just any kind of flashy jewelry on camera can also be a distraction. So be mindful of those things. Got it. Any other questions before we go on to the basic setup? And in the setup, we actually talk about the backgrounds and your video and some tips on making sure that your video is optimized. But any questions about the distractions? And we will be going into backgrounds in this section. There was a question on background. Uh, so we'll go into that and how to best set up your home office. And Randy, I don't know, there was also a question on uh, people, how many people can be put in small groups. And I believe that's 200 for Zoom, but isn't it more for WebEx, I believe? So with Zoom, there's a limit of 50 rooms, but only 200 participants in the entire session and the entire meeting. So if you have a thousand people, that would leave 800 people in the main session with the other 200 in the breakout rooms. Now with WebEx, it's, they allow for up to 100 people, I believe, in each room. So I'm not sure how many breakout rooms are allowed in WebEx, but it's, it's a lot more. Yeah. But then again, when you have so many people in so many breakout rooms, that can become a nightmare. So just plan out your, your conference accordingly. But great question. Uh, let's see here. Oh, can you tell who is making the noise if they are all, if they're not muted? You can, but the quickest thing that you can do is, I'm not sure if you can see my screen, but um, actually I can't show my window. There's an option. So there's an option in Zoom when you're sharing your screen, you have the option of sharing your Zoom window. So right now I just moved my participant panel on the in the sharing area, but it's not showing. Um, but you can mute everyone. That's the quickest thing to do. However, if you want to troubleshoot, you can see who is speaking. In fact, if you look at the participant panel right now, you can see the little microphone animated next to my name. But Sharon, can you say something for a moment? We can see Sharon's name. Um, yes. So now you can also see as I talk that that, that is moving. The green comes on the microphone. Mm -hmm. So another, another um, topic that's been discussed a lot in the Zoom forums is how do you mute everyone and make sure that they stay muted? Because that's the issue when it comes to these video conferences is when you mute everyone, people can still unmute themselves and still disrupt. So within Zoom, once you mute everyone, there's an option that says, do you want people to unmute themselves? So that's, that's the other option. Okay, so let's go to the home office setup. Now, this is what a lot of us thought working from home would look like. I thought it would be <laughs> comfortable and cozy and but no, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have three kids and it's been nonstop. Um, it's been a circus, I'll just put it that way. So we're gonna talk about the space, the equipment, the network, and what everyone wants to know is the video in the background. Now, these, there are a couple of links here. These are some very well put together videos on how to set up your office. One talks about feng shui, one talks about all of the little details when it comes to setting up your home office. And it's done by someone that does uh, video production. So very, very useful tips in both of these links here. But the first thing that I did to make a huge difference in my work environment was getting my own space and getting, my, getting an extra pad for my chair. And that, that's all I needed for a more comfortable space. Now, many of us use laptops, but the thing is once you start looking at your laptop all day, you get the neck strain, and the other thing is, I'll talk about this when it comes to video, but you're not, you're not eye level. You're not looking at your audience at, um, at their level. So one easy fix is to elevate it. And we have a link that goes to um, the best sellers on Amazon for mounts and stands for your laptop. I mentioned my chair. Now you don't have to go out and spend money on a new chair, but make sure you eliminate the squeaks. This chair, when I first got it, it was very squeaky. So that's something that can disrupt your audience very quickly, is that squeak. So WD-40 or some lubricant, that'll, that'll square that away. Now, this was probably my best investment here. 
and it's the these blue blocking glasses. And what's nice is it eliminated a lot of eye strain that I had, and it also helped with my sleep patterns. So I guess blue lights coming from your screens emits um, something that uh, disrupts your melatonin um, production in your brain. So quick, quick, quick tip. Uh, so try out the glasses. Uh, you might notice a difference. Some people have not, but many of the people that I've talked to, they have noticed a huge difference when it comes to using these glasses. Now, these are just some basics, but we often overlook the patches because who, who, who needs to patch their computer? It takes time, and whenever you're in the middle of something, the last thing you want to do is an update. So just do it in the off hours. The important thing is the security patches that are applied in these updates. So just do them. Just spend some time, shut down at the end of the night, but before you do, run those patches and run those updates. And just in case you do have a computer issue, make sure you have your computer backed up. So again, we have some links that allow, that show you how to do all of the backups for both Windows and Mac. And of course, when we're on these video conferences, it does use significantly more computer processing power. So make sure you're optimized. And again, more links to more tips that we have to cover in this, web, in this webinar today. But one thing that you might wanna do is just check your network speed. Do this when you're, when you're very busy and do it when there's not that much traffic. And the important thing is when you have many people in the house that sharing your network, you can use this to identify whether or not you have to maybe ration your <laughs> bandwidth like I know, Sharon, that you have a son that uh, might be playing games right now. <laughs> yeah, he plays a lot of video games. Yep. So I always have to tell him when I'm going to be on an important Zoom call. Yep. So easy thing to do is go to speedtest.net. So I did a quick test. Once you hit go, it checks the download and the upload speed. Now, the important thing is the upload speed. If you want to share your video, you want to make sure that you're running at least 10 megabytes or megabits, one of the two. You want it to be at least a 10 when, it, when you run this test because you could lag and that will disrupt your, your video. The other thing, I, I didn't know this. Uh, I had a technician come out to take a look at my network, but he said the easiest thing to do is just reboot your router because it's just like a computer. It has to refresh its memory every once in a while. So maybe do this once a week. And the same goes with your Wi-Fi access point. Besides the tips, in that link there and repositioning it to make it faster. It's again, it's just like a computer. It also needs to be refreshed. And if a, maybe a neighbor uh, has another Wi-Fi network that has the same channels and the same uh, Wi-Fi signals, sometimes they do overlap. There are some tests out there that you can do to, to make sure that your Wi-Fi network is optimized. Now, this is, the, this is probably the, the biggest thing when it comes to any video conference. When the network dies, the only thing that's left is the audio. So you want to make sure that you have the best quality audio that you can get. So easiest thing to do is get a couple of headphones and a noise canceling microphone or a headset. So Sharon, she's got a couple of earbuds plugged into her, her Mac laptop right now, which is perfect because it, counts as, it cancels out a lot of that noise. Now video, easiest thing to do for optimizing your video is just get it eye level. As long as you're making eye, eye contact, again, if you disengage from your audience, that gives them permission to disengage from you. So make sure you try to make that camera eye level where, whenever you can. Now, I saw some shady characters in the chat earlier today. I saw the video. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have proper lighting. The easiest thing to do is just make sure you have as much lighting in front as you do behind, and that evens it out. Your camera is in this battle for adjusting the settings constantly. So make it easier for your camera. You could have the best camera in the world, but with poor lighting, it doesn't help. Now the background, I mentioned the nightmare behind the screen here. Let's talk about backgrounds for just a moment here. When it comes to the green screens and virtual backgrounds, they're nice, especially when you have just a huge mess behind you. The easiest thing to do is either put up a background or use the virtual backgrounds. Let me talk to you about why you shouldn't. As you can see here in this picture here, this gentleman just made it nice and clean in the background by changing the scenery. But let's talk about why you shouldn't use it. When you look like this, when you have poor lighting, 
or poor choice of clothes when it comes to using your green screen or both poor lighting poor choice of clothes maybe the back actually the background doesn't look very appealing um, you get this ghostbuster halo which doesn't add any value i'll talk about why you should use virtual backgrounds but to, before we do that this is how you access it i won't go into detail here but for the most part there are the menu options on a pc and it's um, under the uh, menu expansion button there and that's how you can find the virtual backgrounds on a mac it's up in the menu in the top left but again these are all in the download so if i missed anything you can always access it along with the links that uh, that are in this as well now this is when you should use virtual backgrounds when it actually adds to your message when it doesn't distract when you have the proper lighting and when your computer is able to process all that extra uh, all the extra things that it has to do to enable that background um, the main thing is make sure it is purposeful and actually again adds to your message so we mentioned a lot of the links and these are all best-selling items on Amazon. These are links to the best sellers, not to individual items. So that way, if things run out, maybe because of demand, all of these are linked to the bestseller groups. So any other questions before we, uh, before we close? Again, Sam has a, uh, a, a virtual background right now. That's a picture. And if she takes it away, you can see that's her actual background. So that's an example. You know, you can look like you're in a conference room in a modern office building. And there is one that, uh, there you go, on a beach, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> New York. <laughs> and then there's Randy. You know, so there's yeah. so many things you can do with your background. But do try to make it not distracting. Yeah, and have fun with it. So we have a crazy hair day, we have a crazy hat day, a crazy shirt day, and a crazy background day in our group. So I've got the office behind me. Um, got a roller coaster here. Um, <laughs> hamster wheel. Hamster wheel. <laughs> so I and this is a this is another colleague's office. So when he stepped away, I I snap I took a snapshot of his office, and I replaced it with mine. So it looked like I was in his office. So have fun with it. But then again, if you're delivering an important webinar or a serious meeting, make sure it doesn't distract, make sure it adds value to your message. Right. Um, but let me go ahead and hand it over to you, Sharon. Awesome, thank you so much, Randy. Well, we have been, uh, we're grateful that you joined us today and we want you to know how you can continue with us. We wanna be helpful in these times. So we've started a free community of practice on LinkedIn. And that is the link. And we will make sure in the handout that link is included. That is something that we're gonna be posting regularly, tools and tips to help you with these times and with working virtually, as well as in leadership and team and organization development. So we will be posting there regularly and also helping to facilitate a dialogue where you can really have a community to share with. In addition, we're offering a virtual workplace engagement, Where's the Water Cooler, for webinar series. So that's gonna be once a week for 90 minutes, starting May 7th. And we're gonna to do topics such as how to maximize technology, uh, to make virtual meetings interactive, as well as how to stay engaged and collaborative as a virtual team, how to build those relationships virtually during challenging times, and how to stay authentically centered during times of transition. So this is not only for the coronavirus that we're in, I, I happen to see a huge movement, and I don't know if you agree, but I see a huge movement to virtual work. It's a cost savings. You know, our team has been virtual for 20 years, and it is something that, you know, we are just used to and normal, and there's so many ways you can, so many things you can do, and so many tools and tips that you can do, and so, uh, we have a web link there if you're interested in this webinar series. Um, there's a discount if you participated in this, in this webinar uh, at 20% discount. So we'd love to see you there. We're happy to answer any questions you may have about that. You can always reach out to us or Samantha and we are you know, here for you um, during this time. So 
We want to uh, thank you and we hope that, uh, and we will also be answering any questions after this. Uh, but Randy, if you go to the next chart, you're also going to be, we, we hope that we've helped you go from maybe feeling like pulling your hair out to more of a productive, efficient workplace uh, that you can enjoy more of this working from home and working remotely. So again, please join us on our community of practice. And we've also put together an ebook that we've collaborated with one of our partners, MYCA Learning, and Inside Out Learning, we put together an ebook on the remote remedy and how you can work remotely in an effective, productive way. So we are going to be sending that out at the end of this. Um, Faustine will be sending that out to everyone. Please share that with your network and because we know people need these skills in these times. So we put it together and hope that it can be shared widely. So with that, are there any additional questions that you may have for us? Because we're here for you. We can, we can stay on and answer any questions or show any demonstrations that you may like. So seeing some thank yous and love the information. Well, we loved providing it. So, uh, but if you have any additional questions, we're here. Great, and then it says, do you think it's necessary to have a branded background? So that was a good, that's a, that's a good question. What do you think about that, Randy? I, um, I don't think you necessarily, it needs to be consistent with your brand. Yeah, I, I personally like it because we see many people out there that they just have a plain background. And when you're looking at all of the thumbnail videos of people on screen, they, they, won't know much about you other than what you say or what you have to share during the meeting. So by having some type of branding right behind you, exactly like what you have, you have the logo there. So that adds to your brand. Um, anything that will help your message or help with any objective or any goals or objectives that uh, your company has. Uh, I did see someone that had, um, uh, it looked like, uh, uh, like Douglas. I see Douglas there and he's, He's got branding all, all around there. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not cluttered. It adds value to his video. So right away, I know what company he's with. So I, don't, I didn't necessarily have to see any, any messages coming from him to know what company he's with. So I would definitely use it whenever I can. Yeah, we have a banner. That's what's behind me right now that we use when we go to trade shows uh, where it just can stand and I decided to put that in my background because, sorry, my, I just hit my, um, my headset here. <laughs> can you still hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. So I decided to put that in my background and that's branded. Um, so I think, I think all of that is, is important. So the other thing is the use of the spotlight video. So I mentioned Douglas, so I just put Douglas in the spotlight. So everyone sees him on camera right now, but uh, very, very good use of uh, branding all around Douglas there. Um, in fact, uh, it makes me want to change my, my plain background now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that's my virtual background. I do have the same branding, just depend on Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> but I, I also, right. since we work from home, my refrigerator, way yeah. <laughs> much way too often <laughs> i know that's another danger look at you all right you and randy in your background this is a good guy right here yeah isn't he we're so blessed to have randy and samantha my whole team so nice great <laughs> okay good well we uh we thank you and if you have if anything comes up after this please know you can email uh, email Samantha at insideoutlearning.com and we hope that you'll join our free community of practice and spread the love with the remote remedy uh, with the ebook uh, so that people can find out some good tips for how to get through these times. All right. Bye guys. Okay. Bye-bye.